Sabres split the weekend, and we've got some injury updates to give you. That's coming up on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on our YouTube channel. Check us out there where you can like and subscribe to the show. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase a loss and a win over the weekend by the Sabres an injury that comes out of the weekend and we have a new uh shift in the way Don Granado is going to treat his goaltenders among other things including a big call up Matthew Savoy is now with the Sabres what is the plan with Savoy one of the Sabres top prospects he is expected to make his NHL debut at some point here, and we'll talk about in a little bit when he will play, what he's been doing with the Amherst, and what I'm expecting from him uh, going forward. But what a difference of two games, Friday and Saturday, for the Buffalo Sabres. Friday was one of the worst nights to be in that arena in a very long time. You know, you're getting excited. I was getting excited. I'm at the game, got good seats. You know, we're eating before the game. It's Friday night, no work the next day. They're wearing the black and red, which they never lose in. They're playing the Flyers, who I still maintain, even after seeing what they did Friday to the Sabres, and even Wednesday because of how much they outplayed them in that game, still maintain the Flyers are not a very good hockey team. So you got black and red at home, Friday night, just beat this team. They're playing their backup goaltender, and... They're not a great hockey team, and it just never, ever, ever was close. It was never a fun game to be at right from the get-go. Two goals in the first two minutes by the Philadelphia Flyers. They got down 3 nothing later in the first because of a really bad J.J. Paterka giveaway, and it never really felt like much of a game after that. I mean, the Sabres got rolling a little bit and with some chances in the second period, but they weren't able to capitalize, and I left after the second period. And you know what? That game on Friday night is a big reason why fans are not filling up the building yet. They're not all the way back filling up the building. There is hope. There is promise. But that game right there, I mean, you've got, you're trying to rebuild a fan base. You're trying to rebuild a season ticket base. You can't have a performance like that in a big game alternate uniforms like that on Friday night. It was embarrassing. I thought the effort was terrible. I'm not usually one that picks on the player's effort, but you didn't play the night before and you played the same team on Wednesday. There was no reason for an effort. I thought that lack lack of days ago. I did not think the Sabres were very much engaged in the game. Um, And that was certainly true from the get go. Nothing good out of that game on Friday night. I thought Lukanen was bad. I thought, Pretty much every Sabre player was pretty bad in that game. If you want to look at some of the advanced stats, did anybody come out on the positive end uh, in terms of that at five on five? Uh, Yeah, a couple. Jordan Greenway did in that game. Kyle Poso did. Peyton Krebs did. Um, But the Sabres were not a great hockey team in that game at all. And they did do a great job, all that being said, of bouncing back and not letting Sabre fans stew on that performance for a few days here because, man, did they bounce back in Toronto. What a win. That was, to me, the most impressive performance of the season for the Sabres thus far. 6-4 to four at Toronto. That's a great hockey team. That's a talented team on the road. It is Saturday night. It is hockey night in Canada. The Sabres had just played the night before, and they ran through Toronto. 40-29 to were the shots on goal. Shot attempts at 5-on-5 were 49-39 to in favor of the Sabres. Scoring chances, 27-15 to in favor of the Sabres. Their expected goals for percentage was 64.35. That was the Sabres' highest expected goals mark 
in a single game all year at five on five. That was their best performance. They were awesome. And it was a bunch of different goal scorers getting in on the act. Congrats to Ryan Johnson for his first career NHL point. That was a really nice pass to Jeff Skinner. But all in all, that looked like the Sabres of last year, which was a team that could score six goals at any given moment. And a team that, you know what? Had a goalie capable of bailing them out in some big spots. Didn't think Devin Levi played particularly great on Saturday against Toronto, but there were those couple big saves that he made, including that diving save across the crease, which was probably his best of the night in the first period. But Paterka, he continues to stay hot, his fifth goal of the year, with a power play wrist shot, well-placed shot. It had pace on it. Uh, Tage Thompson, shorthanded. It just trickles through. Joseph Wool, the Leafs goaltender, after Thompson stole it from Mitch Marner at neutral ice. Thompson has been arguably the Sabres' best penalty killer all year. It's been a huge addition to his game. He's been a very one-dimensional offensive center to this point. This year, he's really added the defensive game, especially on the penalty kill. That was a great steal, and then he was able to finish it after. That was a, a cool sequence in the second. Three goals within five and a half minutes of each other. Thompson shorthanded. Then Austin Matthews on the power play to tie the game at two. And then you love this, right? While the opposing team, while the away team is announcing their goal, while they're announcing and it's ninth of the season, Austin, oh, Jeff Skinner just scored. In the middle of the goal announcement, Jeff Skinner scores his sixth of the year. Again, that was a sweet pass from Ryan Johnson, uh, his first career NHL point. I, I thought Johnson was pretty good. I, he didn't play a lot of shifts, didn't play a lot of minutes. Um, he only got to 820 in this game, 12 shifts in total, but for getting his feet wet, saw some nice plays, saw some nice skating, uh, as the seventh defenseman, he did end up playing more than Jacob Bryson. I, the thing I would like to see going forward is if they're going to go six defensemen and someone's hurt, I think it, you go Ryan Johnson. I think Johnson is their seventh best defenseman, at least in the organization right now. If everybody's healthy, I'd rather have Jacob Bryson here as the seventh practicing and not playing and have Johnson playing down in Rochester, uh, getting minutes there and developing. So that's what I'd be doing with Johnson. I would have him down in Rochester unless there's an injury, then I would call him up and play him. And that might be kind of crappy to do to Jacob Bryson, but I think that's the best outcome for the Sabres in terms of um, who you're getting out of the, the best play out of. Otherwise, Johnson, I thought, was pretty solid uh, in that game. And his expected goals four percentage, if you're wondering. Um, actually, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, my, maybe my eyes were lying. I liked that play, but he was dead last on the Sabres in expected goals four percentage. But again, small sample size for him because it was only eight minutes of ice time. Anyways, what else? The th That was goal number three for the Sabres. Jordan Greenway. In the third, again, the Leafs score and the Sabres answer soon after. Austin Matthews comes out in the third period, scores his hat-trick goal to tie the game at three. Uh, that was not his hat-trick goal. Sorry, that was his second. Tenth of the year, Jordan Greenway, less than three minutes later, starts the play in the offensive zone with a hard four check along the wall. He keeps the puck alive. He puts it down to J.J. Paterka, who finds, great job by Paterka, great vision to find an open Casey Middlestat in the slot. Middlestat rips it. It's a great save. And then Greenway just beats John Klingberg, Leafs defenseman John Klingberg to the puck. Klingberg is a really bad player, by the way. This was a horrible effort. I would want him benched if that were my team immediately after. But Greenway goes to the net and is able to finish it for his second goal of the year. Another uh, five-on-five five point, by the way, for Casey Middlestat. Uh, Matthews then uh, ties it at four. Again, it was a back-and-forth game all the way through. The 12:48 mark of the third, Alex Tuck has a Rasmus Dahlin one-timer go off his shoulder and into the net. And you might say, well, it's a little bit of a lucky goal. It's not luck, though. The result, the, the final play to send the puck into the net is lucky, but the Sabres had controlled possession and were buzzing right before that goal went in. They were bound to get a penalty or a scoring chance like that anyway. Um, but Dahlin, a nice shot. He was going to miss the net. 
but it was hard. And he was gunning for that top corner, and he didn't need much of a deflection from Tuck to find it. And then Tuck, actually, what's funny is his empty net goal was more impressive than his than his five on five goal. Uh, he he chips it past the forward. He goes past John Klingberg, and he skates through two Leafs for the empty netter. And that was after, by the way, he blocked a Klingberg shot. Uh, Klingberg's so casual, man. He's not a good player. But Tuck was not. He is super fast. He races it into the empty net. Sabres win 6-4. to four. What a win. Again, my favorite game of the year for the Sabres. And they are able to not only improve to 6-6 six and six with 12 points, but also send Toronto to 5-4-2. and two. They're only sitting on 12 points. Uh, the difference there being Toronto's only played one less game, but we're very early on in the season. Sabres are tied for that final playoff spot with Toronto. They're, they hey, they climbed up. They, they were in last for a time here at the beginning of the season. And what did I say in the show? It's early. It's okay. Just don't dig yourself too big of a hole that you can't climb out of. And they've already begun to climb out of it. They passed Ottawa, Pittsburgh, Columbus, Philly, Washington, and Florida. They've passed all of those teams in the last, what, 10 days since I said that? So they've already done a good job of climbing their way back into a solid position to make another jump at some point here during the regular season where they'll probably need a win streak. But again, they have put themselves in that position. Time out here when we come back. Some big updates from practice, including Matthew Savoy's arrival to the Buffalo Sabres. That's coming up here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast. We are presented by Game Time. If you want to be in the arena for these big games, there's going to be a playoff race this year. I'm pretty sure of it. You got to check out the Game Time app. It's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices shows your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game time is deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, and sometimes even an hour after it starts. It's the best place to find last-minute or even, again, after the last minute seats, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NHL. You're going to get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Jody Biasi back here on the Locked On Sabers podcast. We have some updates from practice on Monday between games. Sabers win on in Toronto on Saturday. They are in Carolina for a Tuesday night game, and Carolina got some really bad news in that Freddie Anderson, their starting goaltender, is dealing with blood clot issues. So serious uh, situation there. You hope that he's going to be okay um, and get to return to play hockey at some point. But for now, he's not. And it's going to be Antti Ranta, who's a good goaltender in his own right. And they have signed uh, Sabre legend Yuroslav Halak uh, to a PTO, I believe. So they're going to be riding with those two for a little bit, it seems. Uh, I would expect Ranta between the pipes Tuesday, but maybe we'll get more official word uh, on Tuesday. Anyways, for the Sabres, before their meeting with Carolina, they practice at Key Bank Center. And before we get to Matthew Savoy, a couple of other updates. Dylan Cousins sustained an injury he should return in a couple of days sounds like he'll miss Tuesday's game uh if you're asking me but we'll see he did not practice on Monday upper body injury to Brandon Byro and that one sounds like that one could be a little bit more long term again waiting for more details on that but I'm not expecting Byro back anytime soon so where that leaves the Sabres well you're looking around and you're looking at the current line combinations, and you've got room for some of these Rochester guys to continue to make an impact. Casey Middlestat skated on Monday with J.J. Paterka and Jordan Greenway. That was the line that was together in Toronto. Tuck Skinner and Thompson back together, of course. Krebs was skating with Victor Olofsson and Lucas Rusek, but Matthew Savoy was rotating in with Rusek, and then you had Jost with Gergensons and Akposo. Blue line, Darlene and Ryan Johnson. Interesting. I like that idea. Um, Power and Yoki Haru, and then Clifton and Eric Johnson. Bryson was the extra. And I like this. I would like to see more out of Johnson. I, playing him with Darlene is intriguing. Uh, see if they can get the most out of him. And, of course, you could always go back to – you could put Yoki Haru with Darlene if you need to at some point. But while Matias Samuelson is out, I like that 
Don Granado's trying things and Johnson being in the top six and playing with Darlene especially would satisfy as that. So anyways, on the forwards though, so Rusek skating on Monday, Savoy on, you know, the guy rotating in. Don Granado says Savoy, who just got called up from his conditioning stint, that ended. Uh, that ended. He played his couple of games in Rochester, and honestly, he did he did pretty well. Just looking at the numbers, reading tweets of some guys that cover the Amherst, uh, it seemed like he wasn't necessarily dominating. And even on his line with Isaac Rosin and Yuri Kulik, Kulik was the guy that was kind of carrying the load up and down the ice. But Savoy was contributing. Two goals, three assists, five points in six games played. Very solid for him. Uh, didn't get a point last year in two playoff games with the Amherst. Uh, should have been more than the two games. But this year, six games with the Amherst, and he's almost at a point per game. Now, Don Granado says that he wants Savoy to get a couple of practices under his belt before he puts him into a game. So, if you can uh, read between the tea leaves on that, don't expect him to play on Tuesday against Carolina, but I might expect him to play Friday against Minnesota. He got one practice in Monday, and then you got Wednesday, Thursday. I don't know if the Sabres will practice both days. I imagine they'll practice at least one. Is two practices enough? If they practice a third time, is three practices enough? They also play Saturday at Pittsburgh. My guess is Savoy will play his open, his first game on Saturday at Pittsburgh. That's a, just a pure guess. I It's going to be one of the two. I'd be stunned if it wasn't one of the two. But maybe to avoid him going a, on a back-to-back for his first NHL action, you hold him out against Minnesota, and you throw him out on the ice at Pittsburgh on Saturday night. And Pittsburgh is not off to a great start. In fact, they're second last, tied for last, in the Eastern Conference. So it's not like Pittsburgh is what it was three years ago in terms of a challenge. You know, oh, I don't want to throw him out his first game against Sidney Crosby. You can avoid him from playing with Sidney Crosby. Uh, so we'll see what Granado does, but don't expect him on Tuesday against Carolina. I am expecting some excitement from Savoy. I thought he should have been on the team to begin the NHL season, but other complicating factors happened. One, Zach Benson showed up, and I don't think anybody really saw that coming. Uh, I certainly didn't. Two, Savoy got injured. Remember the the first shift of that one game at the Prospects Challenge? Uh, Savoy got injured. So two things happened that prevented that, but I always wanted him to be in the NHL. It made no sense to me to see him go back to the WHL. His team moved. So it's a whole new, you know, realm for him. It's kind of maybe uncomfortable. He had 95 points last year in 62 games, including 29 points in 19 WHL playoff games. He's accomplished everything he needs to in juniors. I don't really know what more, what benefit it would be for him to send it back. He's one of those tweeners where the AHL is probably the right spot for him, but he's not allowed to go there. So I think the NHL is a better idea. Um, and I would love to see him get some action and he will here. Eight to nine games, we'll see before they have to make a decision. They could send him to World Juniors in a month. But I'm expecting him to look pretty good. I'm expecting him to look like he's capable. He's 19. He's small, right? Five foot nine. I get it. But this is the next step for him. This is the next step. If you're dominant in juniors like he was and you're a point of game player in the AHL limited action like he was, all right, well, NHL, come on. NHL, it's time for you to do it. And he's never going to be a big player. So if you want to tell me about, well, you just put more weight on, put more more growth, maybe there's a little bit of that. But he's never going to be a big player. So I'm very curious to see what we get from Savoy. I'm excited to see what we get from Savoy. And I am expecting him to look like a real NHL player. I'm expecting him to look like he deserves to be in the NHL. And to drive a conversation about him versus Benson. I'm expecting him to look that good. Um, but we'll see. If when he gets in in the first place, one more time out, we come back. What's going on with the goalie rotation? Granado updating us uh, on that uh, on Monday. Today's episode of the Locked On Sabres podcast is presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. Right now, new customers are getting $150 back with America's number one sportsbook in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. You have an opportunity to do this tomorrow against the Carolina Hurricanes. Sabres are a, under, a big underdog in that game. 
But, you know, they're playing a backup goaltender, so you might want to take a look at it. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. App is very easy to use. It's so user-friendly. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads and player props and over-runders. Tage Thompson, over three and a half shots on goal. I like that. And plenty more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Kick off the NFL season. FanDuel official partner of the National Football League. Back on the Lockdown Sabres podcast, Joe DiBiase. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. It's Sneaky Joe Sports on Twitter. One more update to bring you from practice on Monday. Sabres head coach Don Granato says that going forward, the goalie situation is going to be a split. A pretty, it sounded like an even split between Uka Pekalukanen and Devin Levi. Neither has necessarily looked all that consistent so far this year. Both have played five games. Lukanen, a 901 save percentage, two quality starts. Devin Levi, an 886 save percentage with one quality start. Now, the advanced stats, the one I like to use the most, goal saved above expected per 60 minutes of play, they read as though they're about even. So while the save percentage might be very different, out of 71 goaltenders this year. Both of these guys, by the way, are below expected. Goals say below expected this year. Lukanen is minus one. Levi is minus two per 60. Lukanen is minus 0.2. Levi, that's minus 0.4. Lukanen is 47th in the NHL in goals saved below expected. Devin Levi is 52nd. So they're pretty close. Lukanen maybe has been a hair better, uh, but they've been pretty close. Lukanen was very bad on Friday, I thought, against Philadelphia. And I think Levi was a little shaky on Saturday against Toronto, to say the very least. I don't see a big difference right now between the two. So, yeah, run with it. Back and forth. Really, I wonder, though, if this is just code for, I want to play the guy who's hot, and right now neither guy is hot. I, that's what I wonder about Granado. When neither goalie is hot, is this what it sounds like? Well, yeah, we're just going to go with the rotation between the both going forward. Um, I think if Levi has two good starts in a row, you keep playing Levi. If Lukanen has two good starts in a row, you keep playing Lukanen. The problem here is, and this is why I just, man, I don't want to labor on the same point all year, but I, they needed a veteran goalie in the offseason because here we are. We're right there, first month of the year. We're a month into the season. And two young rookie goaltenders, Lukanen is not a rookie, sorry, but two young goaltenders are entrusted to play in this team's net and neither is consistent. Neither can string three games in a row together that are that are quality. And they need that. Lukanen did it twice at least, but you know, I'm hoping that Levi is going to be the one to do it. I'm more confident he can. But again, I've, I've liked Lukanen more this year than I expected. Uh, just got to get rid of some of those bad starts. They got to get rid of the, some of those bad starts. I don't have a good sense of who I'd expect Tuesday. I might think that Lukanen goes Tuesday against Carolina. And then they split the Friday-Saturday games um, between Minnesota and Pittsburgh. It's just a hunch. Um, but I think if he's saying rotation, then I guess you're going to go back and forth here. Uh, Levi on Saturday, and then this past Saturday, you go Lukanen on Tuesday. More of a preview of Sabres and Hurricanes tomorrow. Thanks, everybody, for listening to today's episode of Locked on Sabres Podcast. If you got a question or a comment for the show, Hit me up on Twitter at Locked on Sabres, or you can do it on a YouTube channel as well. We will have a mailbag portion of tomorrow's show. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Making Locked on Sabres your first listen every day. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.